Hey Canucks fans, hope you are well. Here to break down all of the goals from the Vancouver Canucks 4-3 overtime loss to the St. Louis Blues. Some of the goals were really nice, a couple of them were a little bit ugly, and one of them was quite controversial. I'm sure you know the one I am talking about. Let's get started. In the first period, a bit of a sleepy first period, seven minutes remaining, St. Louis dumps it in. Seems like an innocent play. Hironic goes to retrieve it, gives it to Miller. Miller misplays it a little bit, gets past Hughes, gets past Suter. That's Jake, won't you be my neighbors coming down? Gives it to Thomas. Thomas back to neighbors and pass to Smith. Looked like an innocent play. So let's just see how this goal actually breaks down and how they're able to score. It looked like relatively easily. So this is Miller with the puck on his stick, misplays it, gets past Hughes, and he gets past Suter right there. So now here's Neighbors coming off the bench, and Neighbors finds Thomas. And right here, it looks like the Canucks are in an okay spot. They're in that vaunted W defensive position with all five guys forming a W with only two Blues guys in the middle, and then Thomas, very talented Thomas, in the corner. Thomas gets it, gets it, gets it. And then right there, I want to show you what happens. Suter looks like he's on Neighbors right there. But then Suter sees that no one's manning this guy. No one's taking the guy, manning the point. And if Thomas fires it up the boards to the point guy, he's going to have a lot, of t a lot of time and space. So you'll see Suter leaves Neighbors in the slot and then goes to check this point guy who does a, a sneaky thing by, by sticking out a stick as if, you know, pretending to call for the puck or maybe actually climb for the puck. Meanwhile, Besser recognizes that, oh gosh, my teammate had just left me. I better check this neighbor's guy, but it's too late. By the time neighbors takes that shot, Besser is reaching. He doesn't get there in time. And this putt goes past to Smith on his blocker side. one nothing St. Louis. We'll see this a couple times. There's the nice release by neighbors in the middle. And this one, you'll see how, yeah, another nice, I guess we're going to see it a couple times now that I think about it. And it's one nothing St. Louis. So I think the key to that goal was the fact, a, a slight miscommunication behind the net, Hironic to, to Miller, to Hughes, and then a slight miscommunication between Besser and Suter. Now it's a power play after a delay of game. And then here it's a, a simple pass from Neighbors again, this time to Buchnevich. And I think on this play, I would like to see Myers play this one a little bit better. I get it. It's essentially a two-on-one. But I think Myers... So we look, okay, the Canucks are in their typical diamond formation. And then once the puck gets here, so Zadorov is actually quite high. I'm not sure why Zadorov had to be that high, given that he was here. But right here, Myers starts to reach, and he knows that he's got to block this pass. In any two-on-one situation, even a goal mouth a pass like this, Myers has got to cut off the pass because obviously Dismiss is going to have a much harder time stopping this puck than if this guy shoots. But Neighbors gets it through Myers. Myers, I really don't like this play because he's when he's reaching, look at all of the space that he leaves exposed in front of Dismiss. The puck gets from Neighbors to Buchnevich right there. And look, he has half the net to shoot at. He almost missed it actually, but it go, still goes in. And that's because Myers is reaching, he's leaning, and he's leaving way too much exposed space in front of DeSmith. Do you want DeSmith to play uh, play that pass a little bit better? It's so tough because as soon as you commit to playing the pass, that opens your body up for a shot from this guy. So then an easy tip in from Buchnevitz. It's 2 nothing for St. Louis. Now we're in the third period. The Canucks have some pressure. Hironic makes a really nice play uh, on the line to keep it in. Over to Hughes. Shot deflected by Besser, then a scramble, and then Suter scores on the backhand, and he hurts his left arm or left shoulder while trying to get around JT Miller. I'll show you what happens. They're all checking on him. They're also all checking out the metallic blue helmets, and now the Canucks cut the lead in half. So there's, oh, blinding. But what you see there is Hughes taking a shot. Uh, maybe I'll pause it right before that. Besser's going to deflect it right there. And then Hofer does make the save. One of the saves where he didn't actually catch it in his glove and flash it for everyone to see. If you guys just saw the game, you know what I'm talking about. So the puck then squirts out. And as Suter's trying to get around Miller, I think Miller's reaching for the puck as well. Doesn't know that Suter's behind him. And I think he catches Suter's shoulder right there with his stick. Or, or maybe there, kind of jams him up in the shoulder, in the neck area. But then Suter, <laughs> it's kind of, this is kind of funny actually. Suter is uh, beating him to the puck 
while all four of these blues guys, including the goaltender, can kind of see what happens. And then Suter, instead of coming around, curling, and, and, and stick handling, he just basically sweeps the puck past Hofer. And, oh, they don't... Well, they barely show it. They only show that one replay. So maybe uh, I'm not sure you saw the the celebration. Suter didn't really lift his left arm. Lift his left arm. Maybe it was a little sore after getting, uh, you know, getting accidentally nicked by by Besser. So Suter's tenth. I call him P.S. Shooter. Shooter's tenth of the season from Besser and Hughes. But only 41 seconds later, St. Louis in the zone, and then here's the door up and Petey both lose puck battles and then Hayes gets it to Torpchenko in the slot and Zadorov does not do a good job tying him up. I think DeSmith and Zadorov could have both played this a little bit better. And then this, look how mad talk it is. Zadorov, I'm not sure if he saw a shift after uh, another shift after this goal. So you see Hayes outfight Zadorov there and Petey. Like there's no way that this guy should win this battle against a guy with great hands in Petey and a guy in Zadorov's size. But look he does outfight everyone, and he actually gets it here. So now Torpchenko curls toward the net, and right now no one's on him. Look, you actually see Zadorov turn his head and says, oh shoot, I better go get him. So he checks him, and there we look like we're safe. We look like we're safe, although I think I want Zadorov to be watching the puck here and not just watching the man. Uh, Petey's got to play that a little bit harder. But this is the thing. Right here, here comes the puck. Zadorov's got to either mow him over or lift his stick, does neither. And then he's underneath his stick, but not strong enough. Torpchenko's a strong strong kid. Strong kid. Everyone's younger than me, I guess. I guess everyone could be young enough to be my kids. But Torpchenko is strong enough to get it past DeSmith. I would love to see DeSmith play that a little bit tougher as well. Here's another good look at it. So he's opening up, ready for the pass. Zadorov sees it. And Zadorov, I don't know, it's kind of weird. He He's kind of in no man's land. He didn't go for the puck all the way. But he didn't go straight to Torpchenko. And by the time he gets there, I would have loved to see... Yeah, he does try and lift his stick, but not hard enough. And then Torpchenko, is, you can see it right there, is able to get a stick down and then make contact with the puck. You see it one more time right here, just how strong Torpchenko is. Why don't we watch it one more time? Again, you see how strong he is. Okay, so now the Canucks are on our power play. It goes back to Hughes. It goes, he shoots it wide. No, no, sorry. It tries to get to Miller. It goes off Miller. But then Besser makes an excellent heads up pass to Pius Shooter for his second of the period. And once again, the Blues, the Canucks deficit is cut to only one goal. So let's see what happens here. Now Suter is using the his whole left side. So after the puck went off the boards, Besser makes a really good heads up play. And that's the puck after Besser touches it. Hofer, uh, you usually don't score, uh, save a lot of goals with your back towards the shooter. So the puck goes out. Hofer is right here is like, uh oh, I think I'm in trouble. So he tries to turn around and he doesn't even get set. So look, this is how Hofer is set basically. There's all this room in the five hole and on, on both sides. And then as Hofer brings his stick around to get, trying to get in some sort of position, Suter puts it over his right shoulder. Hofer really has no chance. And look how excited Suter is again. And then all the nice metallic helmets touch one minute left this is a really nice play we have Hronik up top to Hughes Hughes shoots it it goes off the post and then Suter puts it in for his hat trick goal I should say PS Shooter puts it in for his hat trick goal Miller actually gets an assist on this so let's see how this crazy goal happens and of course we're all super excited Miller wins the draw goes over uh, goes all the way back and then here's, PD makes a really nice play. He shields a couple blues, at least one blues guy, gets it up top here. Hironic, is that Hironic? Goes to Hughes. And this is where the Canucks have scored a lot of goals. Hughes finding a guy through this seam. But he takes a shot. It go. <laughs> I can't believe this doesn't go in. Look at that. That's the puck right there. Now it looks like he's got all this room, but in essence, the puck basically has touched the post and or Miller's skate. So it shoots right out. This defenseman misses it. Suter hits it. And then Hofer, right there, knocks it into the puck, into the net with his own blocker. Madness, 50, 51 seconds left. Here's another good look. Hughes. So right there, you can't really see it here. It goes off of Miller, and then it goes off the post. Remember that Miller scored a goal like that against uh, either Chicago or against Toronto? I can't remember when it was. I think it was Toronto where... 
he was just kind of put it off of Miller's skate. This one didn't work. It actually goes off of Miller's skate. It hits the post, comes out. Letty misses it. Suter gets a bit of contact on it. Not great. And then it's Hofer who puts the puck into his own net. See it one more time. Look at the puck come through right there. It hits Miller. It hits the post. Letty misses it. Suter hits it. Hofer puts it into his own net. Exciting. And congratulations to Pia Shooter for getting his hat trick in the third period. It's overtime. This is just after Phil Hronik got stopped on a breakaway. And you guys, this, uh, what do you think of my theory? You know, I kind of said that, Ho joked around that Hofer, throughout the third period, he was flashing the glove. He was actually making saves down by his feet, but they knew he'd catch it with his glove and then he would show everyone. He did that two or three times. Maybe subconsciously, or maybe I'm overthinking it. I think Hronik came in and tried to shoot it at Hofer's glove to try and, and, and prove that, that, he, they could score on Hofer's glove side. First, I know it happens fast. Personally, I would have gone five hole or blocker side regardless. Hofer makes a save, keeps it in play, and then PD actually makes a poor play over skating it, trying to keep it in the zone. And now it becomes a two on one. So PD's tired. He's been out there for about 45 seconds or so. Now it's Letty and Shen. Now here, you it looks like it's a pretty safe play. PD has, in an essence, he's in essence closed the gap against Shen. We don't have to worry about this guy. So Letty goes around the net, but look what happens here. Shen puts his stick and his forearm into Petey's back and knocks him over. Was it the hardest cross check I've ever seen? No, but that's still a cross check. The puck's nowhere near, so it's interference. It's a cross check of interference. It's interference by cross check, whatever it is, and maybe a bit of Petey selling it as well, but I'm not blaming Petey here, I, and I'm not, complaining about the refs. I do think the ref should make that call. Should make that call. So now Letty sees Pedersen basically in a fetal position on the ice. He makes a spin on Hughes. Hughes doesn't know that Petey's down on the ice. He hasn't looked. He's too busy concentrating on Letty. So now he, Petey's just getting up. Letty gets it to Shen. Just misses Petey. And right there, you can see DeSmith cannot see anything. Petey's right in his line of sight. So then, of course, Shen goes far side, and he beats DeSmith. And look how mad PD is. Or well, there's Shen pointing at Letty. Good pass. DeSmith's upset. PD's upset. So I think we see this go one more time after all these St. Louis Blues guys celebrate. Uh, there's DeSmith again. Here we go. So there's the cross check. You can see he puts the stick right in that really tender spot, right under the shoulder pads where there's bare back. Okay, so maybe. You know, now that I see that, maybe that's not so much of a dive because you can actually see Petey's head snap back while while Shen presses into the bottom of his back. So I take it back. I don't. I don't think Petey's selling this. It, it, that looks. That does look pretty bad though. So there's Petey on his side, and I know he's tired, but he doesn't really get up as fast as I would love him to. And then finally gets to Shen, and the, the Smith can't. Actually, I guess he can see, but it's still a really good shot by Shen. And then you'll see it one more time here, pass the, on the far side, and then St. Louis wins the game, 4-3 in overtime. So half glass full approach would say, wow, at least the Canucks um, battled back to get a point, especially when they were down 2-0 um, going in the third period. Half glass empty said they got to overtime, they earned that point, they should have, they had every chance that they had to to get both of them. At least St. Louis is in our division. They are in our conference. However, the Canucks is their first uh, loss in a few games. They're still 3-0-1, oh, seven out of possible eight points on, on the four home games so far. I'm gonna take it. So an entertaining game. I hate that it ended on a goal like this, but overall, I think a lot of Canucks fans would consider the Canucks uh, fortunate to get that point and um, all is not lost in the world. So Canucks fans, let me know what you thought about this breakdown. Let me know if I missed anything or if there's anything that I pointed out to you that you didn't see, do you think that that should be in a penalty called on Braden Shen? So instead of getting a penalty, he gets the game-winning goal. Should that have been a penalty instead? Shout out to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate, Perform and Transform Personal Training Weight Loss. Thank you, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovalander, legendary Andrew Chang for your support. Thanks to Hall of Fame franchise members as well. And thanks to all of you for watching, for subscribing, and for liking. So on your way out, subscribe, like the video, leave a donation if you want to, become a member, or upgrade your membership. 
But most importantly, leave a comment down below. What do you think about this game? And what do you think about this breakdown? Which highlight or play stood out to you and why? Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. God bless and go Canucks go.